In this video I'd like to look into some of the things mentioned in the second paragraph of the study sent to me by my YouTube friend. Um, I'm hoping that what I say makes sense. I'm going to do the same as I did in the first video. I'll read the paragraph and then highlight certain parts of the paragraph and address some of the things that are mentioned therein. When I logged on to YouTube today I noticed that around 8 people had unsubscribed. I'm not sure if that's due to the video or the content, should I say, of the video that I posted yesterday. I made some comments regarding Sunday worship and the mark of the beast. If anyone has a problem with what I'm saying, please get in contact with me if any have unsubscribed because of what I've said regarding Sunday worship and the mark of the beast. Please get in touch, I'd like to speak to you and maybe we can pray together and resolve any any issues. I don't want to offend anyone but I do want to put across what I believe to be biblical and nowhere in scripture do I find or can I find or have I found any evidence to suggest that any of the commandments including the fourth have been done away with nailed to the cross etc etc so as I said I'm going to read the paragraph and um, anything that comes out that I believe needs to be addressed I will address and I'm praying that the spirit leads it says let's look briefly at these arguments to have an understanding of what the arguments are you need to um, watch the first video and listen to the part which I actually read the paragraph um, it says, let's look briefly at these arguments. First, nowhere does the fourth commandment say that Christians are to worship on the Sabbath. It commands that we rest on that day. Um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. That's Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through to 11. And it goes on to say, Sabbath keepers worship on Saturday. However, the word Saturday comes from the Latin for Saturn's day, a pagan day of worship of the planet Saturn and in brackets it has the word astrology. So first of all it says, first nowhere does the fourth commandment say that Christians are to worship on the Sabbath. Often the Sabbath is said to be something exclusively for the Jews. Nowhere does it say that the Jews ought to um, worship on the Sabbath. It does say that we ought to rest on that day. It also says that we ought to keep that day holy and it goes on to describe the fact that the Most High blessed and sanctified and hallowed that particular day. Why is it that we ought to keep the Sabbath and what should the Sabbath or keeping the Sabbath conjure up in our minds? What thoughts should it conjure up in our minds? Basically we ought to keep the Sabbath first and foremost because it's basically something that the Most High asks of us. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We don't keep the commandments to be saved. Keeping the commandments is an outward sign of an inward change. When we keep the commandments, it's basically saying to the Most High that I trust you and I want to please you. When we get into the habit of following the Most High, Commandment keeping becomes almost like a reflex action. The commandments should never be looked upon as ten orders. They should be looked upon in their true light as ten promises. Almost like ten descriptions or ten um, sections of an overall description of a true Christian. Now I'm not saying if a person doesn't keep the ten commandments that that means that they aren't a true Christian. There are many, many genuine Christians in all denominations living up to the light that they have been shown. And I believe that many, many people haven't yet received the true light, the true light connected to commandment keeping. Too many people believe that keeping the commandments is works. It's 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 a keeping the commandment or a religion that 
advocates the keeping of commandments is a works orientated religion um, we are to worship the most high seven days a week the word worship when you look into what it means it means to show someone his or her worth now when we worship the creator we are basically showing how we love him and how much he is worth to us so we worship seven days a week but we keep holy the seventh day meaning that we put aside all things and focus wholeheartedly we focus 100% of our attention upon him in six days the almighty creator made the heaven and the earth and all that is in them and he created an extra day an extra 24 hours to, uh, to, to basically dwell with his people his people on that day are meant to do nothing at all but focus upon him and what he has done and can do for us for them basically the sabbath is a memorial of creation and creation has a part to play in our salvation second corinthians 5 and verse 17 i believe says if any man be in christ he is a new creature the same way that the word created the world is the same way the word creates righteousness in his people john 17 verse 17 says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and I'm praying that people look into the subject without denominational bias. I allowed the scripture to point me to the church that I am a part of at this time and it wasn't any church that says I ought to do this or I ought to do that. The scripture for me told me that I ought to go to this church and if scripture tells me to go elsewhere that's where I'll go that's maybe another video the final part of the paragraph um, refers to Saturday or the word for Saturday being derived from the Latin for Saturn's day I dealt with the, the pagan origins of the names of the week in the first video so I'm not going to go into that at all um, keeping the Sabbath holy doesn't mean that you're actually worshipping Saturn the Almighty willing, I will look at the third paragraph soon in another video. Before I close this video though, I'd like to repeat the appeal that I made at the beginning. If anyone has unsubscribed because of the content of the first video, if anyone has a problem with me or what I said, then contact me and we'll talk. Maybe we'll pray together. I'm not asking anyone to resubscribe. Um, I'm not on YouTube to see how many subscribers I can actually get I am trying to use every avenue open to me to spread the gospel I knock on people's doors I give out flyers whenever um, I'm able or tracts some books I pray for people today I was contacted by a friend of mine and we we're arranging a Bible study with a young lady I'm trying to actively work for the Almighty Creator and YouTube is only a part of the ministry that I am involved in and I would ask you to pray for me as I pray for you. And let us remember something that Martin Luther said, um, the great reformer. He said, it is impossible to preach the gospel without causing offence. It is impossible to preach the gospel without causing offence. The Waldensian people, those who were persecuted in the um, mountains of northern Italy, they said before compromise let there be difference even war and as Christians we are to expect at times war and we when we preach the truth ought not to be shocked and surprised when the truth actually offends one person and sometimes it may offend many people 